Welcome to the special edition of E-Cystic Fibrosis Review. I'm here with Ken Bruce from King College in London. We're in Dublin at the European Cystic Fibrosis Congress. Welcome, Dr. Bruce. Thank you. You were discussing the microbiome uh, today at the European Cystic Fibrosis Congress. Um, what is the microbiome? Okay, well, the microbiome itself is a, is a complex mix of microbes, the host interaction, and, and the totality of those interactions. Um, really, today, my focus was on the microbiota, and more specifically, the bacteria that are present in the airways of CF patients. When I think about the bacteria in the lungs, uh, the focus is often on Pseudomonas. Are there other bacteria we should be concerned about? Yeah, I, th I think the, 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 the focus has been on Pseudomonas, and quite right, rightly so. It's an important um, species, obviously. It's common and it's abundant in many CF patients. But the, the, the story of the past decade is one that shows that many other species of bacteria are present in the airways. And we don't know the importance of these bacteria yet, but they're certainly present. Are there uh, bacteria that are not found in the typical cultures that we get for them from the clinical laboratory? Broadly speaking, again, yes. Um, diagnostic microbiology tends to focus on a number of key pathogens that have been considered important, um, and with good reason, mm -hmm. in, in terms of CF lung disease progression. Um, all the work that has come out from the past 10 years so suggests that these are a limited subset of, actual, of, the, of, of the wider set of bacteria that mm -hmm. tend to be present in a CF patient's airways. Do you think that molecular testing will be part of the future approach to clinical therapies? It depends. I suspect it depends on the, 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 the significance, the importance that starts to get associated with, with the species that have been detected that have not been previously detected. Um, certainly molecular methods offer many attractive advantages over culture-based methods, given the speed and um, ability to turn around data in a, in a rapid way, mm -hmm. um, but the, the real question is whether or not they, they actually are important in terms of lung disease progression, and, and if so, then we should look at that. Uh, many of the studies now are cross-sectional studies. Uh, are longitudinal studies something that are uh, planned for the future? Yeah, so um, the, 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 the studies initially have been cross-sectional in nature, and, um, and these have given some important associations between particular components of microbiota and, and host um, parameters. So these have been important in defining um, the technicality and also some of giving us some insights as to the potential importance in terms of uh, Aries disease. Um, longitudinal studies though are the way forward. Okay, they, they're the studies that are starting to emerge now and starting to, to really demonstrate some some intro, interesting and important links between the microbiota and, and again host parameters. So it sounds as though there may be other bacteria besides Pseudomonas, perhaps some that are more difficult to detect, that may be associated with a progression in lung disease. That's quite possible. Um, we don't know that yet. We should be cautious until we, we do know that. But it, certainly all the, all the evidence is pointing that this is an area which is important to study in a, in a lot more detail. And if that were the case, then these bacteria might be something that we'd focus therapy towards. Yeah, again, we, we need to be cautious, but again, the, the, that, that is, a, that is a, 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 a very real um, uh, outcome of further study. Uh, would these longitudinal studies help us with uh, better defining exacerbations or predicting exacerbations? Longitudinal studies have important roles to play mm -hmm. in defining um, critical times, not just, the, not just at exacerbation for CF patients. Obviously, exacerbations are very important mm -hmm. in CF, and so if we, ca if we could define a, a marker of exacerbation and use that as a, as a, as a way into to, um, preventing the exacerbation, mm -hmm. then that would obviously have many clinical advantages. Uh, do the, does the microbiota change during exacerbation? Again, uh, there's two phases. Okay, there's a phase in the run-up to the exacerbation, or what gets recognized as an exacerbation, mm -hmm. and then there's the exacerbation itself. In terms of preempting the exacerbation, obviously we, we would look before the exacerbation mm -hmm. for some signature shift in, in the microbiota. Mm -hmm. um, but once the exacerbation is being treated with antibiotics, we've both got the exacerbation and we've got the, the, the consequences of treatment mm -hmm. that will impringe on what we see as, as the microbiota. Uh, there's a, a wide use of inhaled antibiotics for Pseudomonas. Do you think we should be uh, targeting other bacteria in the airways with chronic uh, antimicrobial therapy? 
maybe two, two answers to that again. Mm. Um, I, I think that we, we don't, again, have enough information to know whether or not the other components of the microbiota that are present in the airways should be targeted. Mm -hmm. But depending on the agent that's being used, that's the anti pseudomonal, then we may well be treating inadvertently mm -hmm. the other species that are present. Um, are there particular organisms in the uh, microbiota that you're concerned about or that you think are potential pathogens? Other groups have reported pathogens. Um, the Streptococcus miliari group, for example, has been um, identified as being one important um, potential pathogen mm -hmm. in, in terms of lung uh, CF exacerbations. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Bruce, for joining me today. Thank you. And thank you for joining the special edition of eCystic Fibrosis Review.